And all right, I'm back. We got some Fremont Brewing out of uh, Seattle, Washington. And this one is their Lush IPA. This is a go-to of mine, uh, local to me here in Washington State. Lush IPA is in most um, convenience stores, grocery stores, whatever. And um, this is some good shit here. Close to bedtime, so I'm only going for the little one. But um, Lush is a clean malt profile with a very vibrant hop profile coming in at 7% ABV. It says a lush tropical treat from the Pacific Northwest and Seattle is one of our, not Seattle, Fremont Brewing Company is one of our big dogs. They make some really good shit. So cheers guys. Oh yeah. And that is good stuff. Like I said, a go-to of mine around here. All right. So it is hashtag spring week from bbs.live. They do their themed weeks for the shaving community and everything like that. So I figured I'd go with one of my favorite fougeres. And this one is from Purely Skinful Handmade Essentials. And Fougere Lux is one of their beef tallow uh, soap base. It also has lanolin shea and of course uh, more uh, other ingredients you can see the scent profile on the front there i'm not going to go too much into the soap uh, with purely skinful here it is a firm soap it has a fantastic kind of um bright sparkling effervescent fougere bright green um really a crowd pleaser type scent beautiful scent um, but that's about as far as I'm going to go into the soap because I've used this one many times on the channel and if you were curious about it, you will be able to look up those videos if you want to. Um, the focus of today's video is going to be the showdown between the Rockwell 6S Razor, absolutely um, stunning, handsome um, razor, a workhorse that has proven itself over the years in the shaving community and the larger, you know, not so hobbyist community. The Rockwell has stood the test of time and it has proven to be a high quality product versus the Challenger, which is the Blackland Era razor another handsome razor design um this one coming to you from blackland razors which is a trusted razor maker in the hobbyist side of the wet shaving community um but this one here aims to have a little bit more um mass appeal and the era razor is um gonna be the challenger for today this one's much more newer not time tested and whatnot and um, but it does have a lot of hype around it. So I've used it for a while. The initial hype has worn off and now it is time to do a side by side comparison. Um, as you can see here, we got the R4 plate and hopefully that comes through. Hopefully you can see the uh, R4 on that one. And then this one here is Black Lens level four so you can see that level four um so both razors are stainless steel construction this one is just the matte stainless steel finish this one was coated black um and i'm gonna go ahead and get the top caps open and show you guys just a little bit about the razor before we go into loading the blades and whatnot so when it comes to the lather channels, this is sort of what you're gonna be looking at. Both have very large um, lather channels that will no doubt get the job done and let lather pass through. The Blackland has a one screw and two post uh, configuration, and the Rockwell has a three post configuration. Both of them get the job done. As you can see here, the top cap counterparts 
Okay, let's go ahead and get these loaded up. Here's a look at the handles. As you can see, the Rockwell has, you know, ample knurling pretty much throughout the whole of the handle. And the Blackland pretty much has no knurling. <laughs> I mean, you can call these knurling, but it's a pretty sad excuse for knurling. There's not much grip there whatsoever. Um, they do send it with these little rubber gaskets that you can put into those rings to kind of fluff up the grip a little bit, but in all honesty, I think having plastic on the razor after, or rubber, whatever, after advertising an all metal construction, you know, it's kind of like defeating the purpose of being eco-friendly. Um, that's just me. Um, and I think it's kind of gaudy and it doesn't look good. So I go without, um, I'm not one to normally drop my razors, whether it has good knurling or bad knurling. I just try to keep them dry and try to keep a good grip on them. Um, but when a razor does have good knurling, it is appreciated and I, um, I notice it and I appreciate it. Let's go ahead and try to get this blade out without cutting myself. I got um, two brand new uh, Gillette Nasset blades here that I just took out and I am beginning to load the razor so please bear with me. I wanted to do the whole loading process on camera even though it might make things go a little bit longer. I wanted to do it on camera just because um, it will in fact dispel any like you know tomfoolery rumors going on hopefully i know the whole damn transaction wasn't done on camera but please just you know bear with me so okay so there's the razors the rockwell lines right up you don't even have to look at it the blade just falls into place perfectly aligned um, that is something that I can vouch for. I've done it for a long time now. Now, the Blackland era here, I don't know um, if you can tell, but if you just throw it in with Reckless Abandon, you might be able to see that it's a little bit lower on this side and a little bit higher um, on that side. And so the Rockwell, there is whip or not the Rockwell, the Blackland, there is wiggle room. So you kind of have to take the extra minute to um, make sure that it's in there just perfectly centered and tighten it down and then the reveal should be even. Okay, we got that part done. The uh, height of these two razors is almost identical. I mean, really, really, really close on height. The weight is pretty close as well. Um, Rockwell being 118 grams, the um, Blackland being 98 grams. Um, the head design, you can see the, the Blackland is a lot slimmer profile than the Rockwell, but this is technically one plate. Uh, the Rockwell has a um, an above and below type setting, so this one plate has the two and four settings. So that's why it kind of has that uh, more bulky nature. I don't shave under the nose, obviously, so this isn't an issue for me, but I figured I'd point it out just so you guys are made aware of it. Let's go ahead and get some water on the face and get this shave going. Hopefully this video doesn't go on too, too long, but um, hopefully it's information rich and if it does go long, it'll at least be worth it. All right. Got a little bit of moisture on the face. Got my synthetic knot all whipped up with that beautiful, purely skinful lather. An awesome product out of Canada. Um, the brush here is a Dark Sanctum official brush. And it is actually 3D printed. And while we're on the topic of 3D printing... The Blackland era, part of the reason why it accumulated such hype was not only because Blackland is respected 
in the hobbyist wet shaving community, but also um, they employed a new technique to making their razor that hasn't been used before in the wet shaving space. Now they claim it's never been used before in any space, but uh, I highly doubt that. <laughs> um, sometimes you gotta dig a little bit deeper, you know, you, you can't just believe things on face value, especially when it comes to new technologies being used in the niche wet shaving hobby <laughs> as like breaking ground. Um, anyhow, so they used a technology which is pretty much stainless steel, um, 3D printing to make the head of the Blackland era razor. And so that right there is kind of a really unique, um, asset to this razor. All right, that should do it. So I think I'm right-handed, so I think I'm gonna use the Blackland Era. I'm gonna use the Challenger on the right side, and I'm gonna use the Rockwell, the, you know, long time-tested razor on my weekend. Okay, let's get into this. Fresh Gillette Nasset blade in both razors. Both razors are on level four, respectively. So the Blackland Era has five settings um, technically. So they have standard bar, standard bar offerings. So they have five standard bar offerings. And they have five open comb offerings. And excuse the siren. I think Ward has got out that DK is drinking and comparing things again <laughs> um so they have five settings um kind of 10 total if you count that the black lanera has an open comb five open comb and five standard the rockwell has six settings it is only standard bar no open comb for the Rockwell. And the prices on these, the Rockwell for the stainless steel version comes in at 120 for the matte stainless steel. Um, and you get six base plate, base plate offerings for that. Switching over to the Rockwell. Um, and if you notice, I'm still using my right hand. I'm just shaving the way I always shave. <laughs> um, but uh, the Rockwell is 120 for the stainless steel version. It comes with six base plate options, which come in the form of actually three base plates that have two settings on each base plate. And then the Blackland Era comes in at $75, and it comes standard with one base plate option. Now, in order to get more base plates, you can buy additional base plates for $35 each. Doesn't matter what setting. Doesn't matter if it's open comb or standard bar, they're $35 each for each additional plate. So I've heard already, whoops, I almost went into, uh, <laughs> I almost went into just my normal um, cruise control there. But um, if you're comparing the two, you might say, all right, the era is cheaper. But you're only getting one setting for 75. Obviously, it's nice to have that option of having one setting for 75 instead of six settings for 120. But 
if you were to want the whole range of options and you wanted to match Rockwell's six settings, the era with all those additional base plates would go from $75 to $250 with six base plate options. So if you're looking at the comparison there, it's more than double the Rockwell 6S, the price for the standard stainless steel offering. Rockwell being 120 for six plates, the Blackland era being 250 for six base plates. Now all of a sudden, that value has kind of, the tables have turned, <laughs> you know what I mean, when you're looking at the actual, um, what you're getting for the price. So, for me, I kind of like having the six settings, although, in all honesty, I only find myself using, like, two of the settings. So when I bought the Rockwell 6S, I obviously tested all the settings, and all the settings kind of have their time and place that they can be used. But I kind of stuck with a medium setting that I enjoyed, which turned out to be the level 4. And then kind of more of a uh, high efficiency setting and and the, neither of these razors are really highly efficient so there's that but you know I kind of only use like the four five and six on the Rockwell and I'm stuck with the one two and three that I don't often use I will get a shave in with like the two and three plate you know every once in a while when maybe I had a rough shave with another razor and I just want a really mild shave um, while my skin is irritated. So I'll use that, those lower settings. Um, but when it comes to like the Blackland, I can actually, I can actually just buy one setting that I think I'll like and then I can go from there. Maybe if that setting's too efficient for me, I can do a follow-up purchase for a less efficient setting and just kind of pick and choose until I find that sweet spot. Um, and so potentially I can end up with um, a better value with the Blackland Era. Potentially if I hit it on the nail the first time for 75 bucks, you know I'm gonna have one setting instead of six, but in the long run I end up spending less money if I buy that second base plate I'm right there, you know right under the Rockwell price And if I didn't get it that second time and I have to buy a third one I'm already over and I have three plates instead of six so if you kind of see where I'm leaning with my argument I just think for convenience, the Rockwell 6S wins, and for value, it wins. That's just my opinion. You know, don't hate me for it. Aesthetics, I think both are handsome razors, but I do think the fit and finish on the Rockwell is better than the fit and finish on the Blackland Era. The finish on the Rockwell, while it's not the, uh, you know, it's not like high grade craftsmanship, you know, it's fairly basic. At least it's uniform and um, there's no real glaring flaws. Whereas on the Blackland era, you know, what you see on the outside is pretty uniform and smooth. But when you start looking under the cap and around some of the chamfers and whatnot, you start to see that it's less uniform and less um, well done. All right, so as I was blabbering on, the shave went on cruise control, and I ended up getting a nice shave out of both razors. Um, I will say 
Out of the box, the Rockwell 6S is a little bit more user friendly. It has an angle that I feel like is um, easy to find and kind of par for the course for most safety razors. I found with the Blackland Era, you have to use like a little bit more steeper angle because it has that kind of oversized standard bar. So it's not like your typical um, safety bar or safety razor shave angle. It's not so far off that you can't find it and become familiar with it with a few uses, but that's there. I had, I, you know, I have to mention it. Um, so yeah, the other thing to mention is the era comes in matte stainless, um, steel. That's the only color you're getting out of it. It's, um, they said 17-4 stainless steel. I'm not familiar. Uh, that's the Blackland era, and then the Rockwell is 316L stainless steel. Um, the Rockwell has multiple color options, and it also has a, um, a lighter chrome version, which is also cheaper. So the Rockwell has more options for the Rockwell 6 format. They have the Rockwell 6C which is only $50 and comes in like three or four colors. They have the Rockwell 6S, which is 120 for the stainless steel, the matte stainless steel, or 150 if you choose one of their three other colors. And then they have the T2 um, fully adjustable um, razor, and that one is 150 and it comes in like three or four other colors. So with the Rockwell, you really have different price points and um, different materials which, you know, make a razor lighter um, or heavier. And it just has more options overall for the adjustable format. So as things are stacking up here, you know, already you can see like the Rockwell is winning in multiple areas. Um, the shave, I gotta be honest, I enjoy the shave of the Rockwell more, but in the vein of being honest, I can get a great shave out of both razors, and uh, a great shave is what I had here today. Both sides did well, both, both sides got me close. You know, both sides are really close, no complaints there. Um, so... Let's talk a little bit about their packaging. The Rockwell comes in like a nice um, sturdy box with a foam insert that holds the base plates still during transit. It holds the handle and top cap still during transit. Comes with the free pack of blades and Rockwell has a 60 day return policy and a lifetime guarantee. Um, whereas Blackland Era, it comes in a little cardboard cutout and mine and other people's, because I saw other people's, arrived where the cardboard had torn during transit and the razor is just kind of rattling free um, throughout the box. The packaging is much more shitty with the Rockwell, or with the uh, Blackland, excuse me, much more bad, much shittier. <laughs> Can't get my word straight. Much shittier with the, the Blackland side there. And it also comes with some free blades. Another thing to mention is they only have a 30-day um, return policy with Blackland instead of Rockwell's 60-day. And they also have a lifetime guarantee. So as I stack things up here, and I'm going to try to wrap this up quickly. But as I stack things up here, we basically got the Rockwell, more options better value, better shave in my experience. Um, it's time tested, you know, people in the hobbyist community and the greater, you know, wet shaving world, it's time tested and respected at this point. They have um, a better return window and they have more options as far as colors and um, materials used so it in the long run 
to me, there is one clear winner here, and that is the Rockwell, um, the Rockwell Razor. The 6S is just, it's just the clear winner if you're being objective about the stats of each one. So that is my comparison between the two and my feelings on the subject. So you got to take that with a pinch of salt. But in my opinion, the Rockwell is number one and the era the challenger is gonna have to gonna have to go home empty-handed this time so thank you guys for watching hope you enjoyed the video i appreciate you and hopefully this helps you make a decision at the end of the day either razor you choose you're probably going to be happy with it and you're going to be getting some good shapes with it so it is what it is at the end of the day it's your decision and i hope this helped in some way Cheers, guys. I appreciate you. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I will catch you on the next one.